So now, if I lock these keys inside, I'll have to climb under the door because the shop's closed in now. I gotta open up some of these windows. It's kind of stuffy in here. Seeing as this shop closed in now. Let's breeze in here. <laughs> so after installing all these beautiful windows last week, I'm left with a boatload of trim work to do. The three store-bought sliders require internal trim only with an extra piece to fill the gap because they weren't actually made for a two by six wall. My large windows will require internal and external trim because they're really not windows at all. They were doors. Let's make some trim because I don't have any of that, but I do have some long leaf yellow pine flooring that will make some beautiful trim. So I'm kind of getting a late start on day one here, trying to get some of this wood cleaned up in preparation for trimming these windows out. This wood that I'm using is well over 100 years old, set in a pile outside for probably the last year plus, and it needs a lot of work before it's gonna be trim worthy, in my opinion. So day one, just preparation for day two, so I can actually start getting some of this trim in place. So I bought this planer specifically for this hardwood flooring that I put in the house. And a lot of this stuff is so resin soaked, you can see it's just leaching through the back or seeping through the wood. And when you run it through the planer, it gets the planer bed all sticky and then this stuff won't run through, right? The rollers in there just spin on it and it makes it a pain. But what I found that really helps is to make sure that the planer bed's clean and then rub some paste wax. I use Johnson's paste wax on the planer bed and it just keeps that resin from sticking to it and makes your would go through there much easier. There's probably a lot of products you can use and probably a lot of people that are more up on this than I am, but this is what I've been doing and it really seems to help. So just clean it good first. Obviously, probably wouldn't want to rub this stuff on it over a bunch of um, resin, but you get the idea. And I just rub this stuff on relatively heavy. Let it sit for a minute and wipe it off. That's all I do. So check out that piece of wood. Just like a piece of glass, really. This is the back side, so that'll be the front. So I picked up this scraper sometime back. It's a carbide bladed scraper. I had one with a tool steel blade in it, but it's about worthless. It just dulled so quick, but the carbide's definitely a step above. And I was using it to clean up this hardwood floor, and a viewer had noticed this and sent me two other scrapers, just different blade designs. I really appreciate it. Didn't want his name mentioned. One with a round blade, carbide, and then uh, one with a triangular shaped blade, carbide as well. Really nice. And I appreciate that. They're definitely handy. I've used this one so much uh, and sharpened it probably four or five times. It's a great little scraper. It's even got a tool in the back so you can change the flip the blade over. All right, so first thing this morning, just now getting good and light. I want to start trimming out these windows. But in order to do that, I first have to go to the store because I don't have any loose trim nails. And I want to get a nail setter as well. Now, last night it rained pretty good. It's still raining a little bit at the moment. And my windows never got wet, so I know 
and, and it's not a surprise that I didn't expect these to see a lot of weather, which is good because I don't have to worry about them leaking. We're kind of down in a valley. Unless the wind blows the rain, it's just not going to get on this wall. Let's go get some trim nails and see if we can't get a few of these windows done. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? While me and Elizabeth were out, I decided I'd take my crazy wheeled cart over to the trim section. Not only did I need trim nails and a nail setter, but also wanted to take a look and see what was available. You know, maybe spark some ideas of what I want to do. Because likely whatever I do in the shop I'll have to live with forever. So, it doesn't hurt to explore some options, I guess. So I'm going to determine the length that I want the, not, this is the seal, but this will be the stool, actually. I believe that's how it works, if I remember correctly. So I'm just going to set this half-rounded side molding up here. I'll have to work on the inside of this as well, which can kind of be a pain, but that's what you get, right, when you, when you deal with the custom installation, I guess. I'm just using the square to make sure that the inside of my frame here is flush with the outside edge here because this will have a spacer in it and I want it to come up relatively flat. So that's good. I'm going to mark it on the wall. Check my other one. I think it's close. And mark it. And now I can pull this down. This is what's gonna, these are gonna be, um, what are those? The casings, the side trim, right? And now I can pull a tape between my two marks. That's 31 and a quarter. How much reveal do I want on the ends? How much do I want? the stool to stick out. 
three eighths to a half inch on each side, whatever. I mean, it's, that's preference, I guess. Too much may look a little goofy. Uh, let's go with uh, oh, let's go with a half inch on each side. So that'll be uh, thirty one and or thirty two and a quarter. Just gonna square this stool up. majority of the damage on the end of this board. This stuff is so sticky. Probably should use the power saw, really. Yeah, I'm just this is just filling up with resin. I'm gonna get, use a power saw. Definitely the faster option. It's just like chewing gum. Too bad. Could be a little better, but I'm gonna go ahead and call that good enough. Oh, I've got to make a spacer because I've got a gap down here, and I'll just glue that to the bottom of this, and then nail this into the into the wall, and then that will be our stool. It looks good. Looks real good, actually.
Are you kidding me? So these are both 62 inch finish nails, one bright and then one galvanized, basically indoor, outdoor, uh, but I'm considering using the galvanized on the inside as well, uh, simply because I don't want uh, them corroding and leaving rust stains on my wood. Uh, these look fine, so I'll probably just use these. Uh, everywhere. That's the thought anyway. We'll see. Not a lot of difference in the two other than one will last longer than the other. So I'm pre-drilling all my holes just to try to avoid splitting this wood out, especially drilling or nailing right close to the edge. Just so a little risk management, because I don't want to have to make these pieces over. Ah, get off me, mosquito. Man, with all this woodworking that's going on around here, it's kind of opened my eyes to the need, not want, but need, for heavy industrial woodworking equipment to go along with my heavy industrial metalworking equipment. It's not because I want to, right? It's because I need to. This is looking pretty good, right? This stuff's awesome. So luckily, these windows won't need trimmed on the outside. And because these windows weren't made for this wall, we have a gap here that'll have to be filled. Otherwise, it would just be, you'd have trim here and it would look, it wouldn't be finished. Let me uh, bring you in, I'll show you what this looks like, what I'm doing in a little more detail. And you'll see why this takes so long. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So this part of the window should actually come out to the edge here. and. For most, in most cases, you just put your external trim on and it closes it all up and looks good. Well, that's not the case for these windows because they actually don't fit. So you have to make a little extension, really, that's all it is. And that just brings this face out to here and your trim goes on. And it makes it all kind of, you know, look like it's supposed to be. Doesn't look bad. And then below here, because we have a gap, this will get an apron. Another piece of trim that goes below. This would just be a thin piece and it'll look good. This stuff's so hard, if you don't drill it, it'll probably split open on you. So, extra step, but just as sure as you, know, you don't ruin any pieces, this stuff you know, there's a lot of work just to get cleaned up to a point to where you can use it. And you don't want to waste any of it. Tell me what you think. What's it look like, baby? Inspect it, hazelnut. This is on-the-job training. 
She's like a hawk. She's gonna. This whole time. It's like a hawk is gonna shoot <laughs> through the window and snatch me up. Look how scared she is. Yeah. I think she's a runt. We're gonna shrink it too. You okay, little girl? No, nope. I'm scared. Here, you wanna inspect these shavings? See if they meet your approval? I'm not for sure I'm cut out for this job. <laughs>that I've got one done the rest should go quite a bit faster kind of a pattern to work off of what I'm gonna do is not worry about nail holes obviously I've got a nail hole right in the center of this stool and then you know nail holes pretty much throughout <laughs> the window or the trim but that's just what this wood has in it right it's used wood that has holes in it and there's nothing I can do about it other than not use it and that's not an option for me uh, because I don't care actually that it has nail holes in it I mean, looks good to me back window I'm going to do it next I'm going to do all the normal uh, store-bought windows first try to maybe uh, polish up my trim making skills before I get into those big windows a lot more wood there it's gonna be a little more involved so if I mess up I want to mess up on the small pieces you know get the technique down right
my opinion is these gas jugs do the exact opposite of what they're intended to do really I guess they made them to help prevent gas spills but I find I spilled just as much or more with these they pour so much slower uh, than your normal vented jug uh, that you know especially holding five gallons up trying to get it to drain for 20 minutes <laughs> liable to make you spill a few drops or more you gotta feed the beast right I'm so glad I took the opportunity to get all of this wood out of that old house. Uh, me and my dad worked for several days stripping the flooring out of an old farmhouse that was going to get tore down. Man, it's, it's been a great uh, source of wood for me. So as far as the trim work goes, I didn't want anything elaborate as far as a profile on the side of this stuff. You know, this is not some Victorian mansion I'm redoing, it's a workshop. So I decided to go with just a half round on most of the parts, like the casings and the header, and then a full round on the stool, or the, I guess the seal, whatever you want to call it. And it turned out really good. I used my dad's uh, wood shaper, I guess is what it's called. It's basically a router, you know, that's all one unit. It's a pretty handy little piece of equipment that he picked up sometime back. It turned out really good. I'm definitely happy with the results that I got. So this is a pretty neat little machine if you're not familiar with it. Basically you can put any profiled cutter you want on the central shaft here and it'll pretty much put that on the edge of a piece of wood for you. Like if you wanted to tongue and groove joint and you had the cutters you could make that with this machine. And it's pretty limitless I guess, all depending on the cutters that you have. But done a good job on the trim that I had. I wanted just a simple radius. It's quick to do on this machine. So my dad's an 80 year old retired auto mechanic slash tobacco farmer slash state worker in his later years in life and he definitely enjoys woodworking. He kind of got into it late in life but it's a hobby that he does to keep him busy when he's not mowing grass that is. Um, you know in the winter time he can get in his shop here and make a birdhouse or two or 17 actually because there's not a yard around here that doesn't have a birdhouse in it that was made by him. I've probably got seven or eight in my yard along with windmills and bookshelves and paper towel holders. And everybody knows the lineup of parts or knickknacks that woodworkers make, and hobbyists that is. He enjoys it, so do I. And this tool here is relatively new to his arsenal. Only the finest wood and craftsmanship for the bug cemeteries in my shop. That's all window seals usually are. Places to store stuff. Places to collect dead bugs. Cool. 
So all the non-custom windows, all the three windows that raise are finished, and it really turned out better than I expected, to be honest. The wood really made a huge difference. Although it was a lot of extra work to use this wood, you know, my options on the store-bought trim were just not very good, considering what good quality wood trim costs. Um, you know, it just didn't make sense. So a little extra work to go through all of this, but it was well worth it. How often do you trim your windows or retrim your windows? So it's a one-time thing. So worth the effort that you put into it uh, to make them look pretty good. Now you could have went a lot farther on these, obviously, or much more elaborate, but just not necessary. Although I am going to stain these windows, the actual window itself, to match closer to what the trim is where there's not such a difference there but looks good still a lot of work to do on the big windows you know the trim on them actually is functional holds the window in and keeps the water out where on these uh, standard windows they're just cosmetic so looks good looks real good I think So man, that's actually turned out really nice. I didn't get as far this week as I thought that I would. I figured I would be able to finish this easily, but it definitely took more time than I expected. And I've still got probably a day's worth of work right here and just cleaning up the wood that it'll take to trim out these big windows because they have to be trimmed inside and out. But you know, it's a pleasure actually to get to use this stuff to repurpose it. You know, this old growth long leaf yellow pine, it's so tight grained and basically just a chunk of resin that'll last forever. So you know, it's worth the work, in my opinion, the extra work uh, to, to use it. Better than seeing it rot away, right, in my opinion. So I've got a favor to ask any of my viewers of the channel who possibly may have got into video drones, video photography, maybe moved on from that hobby into something else and have a nice, decent drone sitting around that they'd like to sell because I'm looking for a drone for the channel. I'd like to get some aerial footage around here. I've got the roof coming up. I've got all sorts of nice scenery around here, and I would like to switch it up and add that ability to the channel to get you know, aerial shots. And I know that there's people out there that do, because I've got a closet full of RC stuff that I once had a passion for, still love, but yet don't have time to use. So send me an email if you've got something like that and want to part with it. We're not looking for Hollywood quality, but we're not looking for, you know, we're not looking for child's toys either, you get the idea. Something decent that would be good for the channel because I'd like to switch it up a bit. Send me an email, maybe we can make a deal. So that's it. Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, my patrons, subscribers, you get the idea. Maybe when I get this wall done, we can make a list of the supporters and put on, on the wall. I think that'd be nice because I appreciate it more than you know. So that's it, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.